what is up guys so i do not actually have a laptop i have a desktop you can see it right behind me and i have an ipad but like everyone else i used to have a laptop as my main computing device and i kind of thought of tablets as just kind of a novelty like it was mostly for old people who couldn't see their phones and little kids to play clash of clans on but after the gen 3 ipad pro came out with all these computer-like features that really made people change their perception of what an ipad could be so eventually i caved in and i got one and i've been using it as my main mobile computing device for a while now and while it's not perfect i've really liked using the ipad and i am confident in saying that i don't regret switching over to the system but before we get into the rest of the video please remember to hit that like button and if you enjoy content like this make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything anyways here are my top five reasons that i love the ipad pro and you should consider getting one so number one seems kind of obvious but i kind of just have to put it in here is the Apple Pencil. So I know this technically isn't part of the iPad itself, but I feel like it's such an integral part of the whole iPad experience, I thought it deserves a spot on the list. So unlike the first gen Apple Pencil, it charges magnetically on the side of the iPad, which is amazing because it means it's always available and it's always charged. So you don't have to worry about finding a separate area to store it or having to keep it charged. Actually using the Apple Pencil is also a really great experience all around. It has a really nice soft matte texture which just feels really great and it's about as thin as a normal pencil so it doesn't feel like you're drawing with a big crayon like some of the other styluses out there and it just helps the pencil feel a bit more refined. And the way that it integrates with the iPad software is really nice too. You can use it pretty much anywhere that you can use your fingers and it just comes in really handy because sometimes when I have to drag stuff across the screen a lot because the screen is so big, the tip of my finger will get a little bit like sore and just being able to switch to the pencil is a nice break from that. Although the only limitation that I've found so far is that you can't use the pencil to swipe up from the bottom to go home. You have to use your finger for that. I'm sure there's a reason for this, like avoiding accidental home swipes while you're drawing or something, but it's just a little annoying that you can't do it during normal use. The pencil is also a must have if you enjoy drawing or making art. The tip is pressure sensitive and it's just really amazing how natural it feels. It's even able to tell how much you have the pencil tilted which I'm sure comes in super handy for artists. And the iPad has professional art apps like Procreate which I've seen people do some crazy things on. Another thing that helps the pencil feel a little bit more natural is that there's no perceptible latency which was a huge problem that plagued styluses in the past. And other than the texture, it really does feel like you're actually writing on a physical piece of paper. And even if you just love the feel of paper, you can get screen protectors that make the texture of the screen feel much closer to that of paper, which some people prefer. If you're a student like I am, I think this is also something that you should really consider as well. Because taking notes with an Apple Pencil is just frankly awesome. You get all the benefits of handwritten notes, but you don't have to carry around a thick notebook or a binder with you to class. Plus, apps like Notability, which is what I use, you actually can search your handwritten notes, kind of like a control F on the computer. Like, I think we've all had it happen to us where you're looking through your notes for a specific piece of information, and you're just like, I know the professor said something about this, but I just can't find it and you're just flipping through and just wasting a bunch of time looking for it. But if you take your notes on Notability, all you have to do is type in what you're looking for and we'll find it for you. And you'd be really surprised at how well it works because I know I was. I don't have the best handwriting but it's been really really good about being able to read just about anything that I write. So number two is iPad OS, more specifically how functional it has gotten. When the iPad first came out it was essentially a big phone and it was more of a toy than anything else. And it was especially apparent with the release of the Gen 3 iPad Pros that the potential of the hardware was amazing, but the software was really limiting it from reaching its full potential. But that all changed in 2019 when the update to iPad OS where Apple finally gave the people what they wanted and added a lot of much needed features in the software that made the iPad a true productivity machine. So there were a ton of features that came out with iPad OS, and I could probably make a whole separate video about that but I'll just talk about some of my favorites. And hopefully you'll get a kind of a general idea just how far the iPad has come just through this one update. First, you can have multiple windows of the same app open at the same time. Like if you need to look at two different pages of notes at the same time to compare them or something, you can do it. Or if you're shopping and you wanna browse on one side and have specific product page on another side, 
you can do it. This is something that you couldn't do before on iPad OS, but you can now. And I think it just makes the iPad way more useful. And it really lets you take advantage of the large screen on the iPad. Second, Safari now has full desktop class browsing. So if you don't really know what that means, normally if you visit a website on a mobile device uh, like your phone, it usually has a different version of the website to help fit the smaller size of the screen, which is a good feature. It helps navigation on websites feel a lot smoother on such a small screen. But the problem is that web browsers on the iPad OS would still automatically use the mobile version of websites and there was no way to get the full version, which was annoying because some of the functionality is just not accessible on the mobile versions of websites, and you would have to go use a real computer. But with desktop class browsing, you get the full version of websites, and it's a very welcome feature. Third, there's a real file system, and you can use external memory devices now as well. The file system is just like the one you'd find on your computer with like folders and everything. And it's just really easy and nice to keep everything organized. And along with that, you can use external memory devices like flash drives and SD cards, although you may need a dongle. The one I got on here is from Hyperdrive and I like it. It has all the ports I need and it has the same anodized aluminum as the iPad itself. So it just kind of blends in and looks like it's part of it. So I guess that kind of turned into a list within a list. And I know that there are a lot of things I could have talked about, but those are just the top three things that I use the most. And it's just made my experience with the iPad just way better. Okay, so number three is trackpad and mouse support. I think that one of the biggest issues with the iPad in the past was that you were kind of forced to use the touchscreen for everything. And don't get me wrong, I love the touch interface of the iPad and I really love how it was designed around touch and how well it works. The problem I have is that I think that there is a place for touch and there's also a place for trackpads and mice. The issue with having only touch is that when you're really trying to get some work done and like you're typing a lot, you end up having to touch the screen a lot to move your cursor around. But it just gets kind of tiring because you actually have to lift your hand off the keyboard and hold it up to touch the screen and navigate it. Which I know doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you're really getting into it, you'll end up having to lift your hand off the keyboard hundreds of times and it becomes a real shoulder workout. Just having an input device on the same horizontal level makes the productivity experience just much less fatiguing. And Apple has done a really good job with the cursor experience on such a touch focused device. Normally it's in the shape of a translucent circle and it does a good job of knowing when to turn black versus white so you can always see it. And when you get close to an icon that you can click, it'll just snap into place on the icon and it feels really cool. And you also get access to a bunch of gestures on the trackpad like swiping three fingers to go home or using two fingers to scroll. And there's a bunch more so I won't really get into it but it makes it just much easier to use. For the most part I really like it and I think it was a really neat way to integrate a mouse into the iPad. The only problem that I've had is that I found it really easy to kind of like overshoot things because the mouse is really eager to snap onto different things, but I'm sure I'll get used to it after using it for longer. Okay, so number four is the form factor. Like this thing is just so small and thin and light. It just fits into your life really easily. And I know that they make other two-in-one devices that are pretty thin and light, but I think that the iPad is one of the best ones. I think that those other devices like the Yogas and the Surface devices were designed to be computers first and then touch devices second. But with the iPad, it's the other way around. It was designed with touch input at the forefront of everything. And while this does come with its own set of compromises, I think it makes it much better as a mobile computing experience. And especially with the Apple Pencil, this takes the place of my computer and my binder full of notes. So when I have to go to class or wherever, I only have to carry my iPad and maybe like some water. Whereas before, I would have to carry a laptop, a binder, and a pencil pouch. And just having all of those things combined into one device just makes my life a lot easier. Like, I don't think anything has changed my daily routine and just how I do things in general as much as the iPad has. And even if you aren't a student, I'm sure you can find a use for this at work. At any job, you'll probably need to take notes, and having an iPad just makes organizing them so much easier. And plus, it just feels really cool to use, like you're in the future almost. Okay, so last but not least, number five is that I just think that this is a really fun device to use and this kind of ties into the whole form factor thing but I thought that this deserved its own place on the list because it's such a huge factor like I think especially with the new update the iPad has kind of become the perfect blend between the convenience of a smartphone and the functionality of a laptop and it's just a ton of fun to use it kind of feels like the first time I got my iPod touch like it was just so cool and just a new type of technology 
I would just find excuses to use it for everything. And I feel the same way about the iPad. And if there's a task I need to do and I could choose between the iPad and a normal computer, I would almost always choose the iPad over a normal computer, unless I really need the big monitor or something like that. It has a nice 120 hertz display, which just makes everything feel nice and snappy, and it has the processing power to drive it properly, so I've never had this thing stutter on me a single time. You also get the benefit of this thing being crazy powerful, but without the noise of fans. I remember how my room would kind of sound like an airport every time I push my laptop semi-hard, but no more. <laughs> The iPad stays quiet no matter what you throw at it because it's fanless, but it will get a little bit warm to the touch, but even that doesn't get too bad. And I think it's really underrated, but it's one of my favorite features of the, of the device and it just really adds to the whole experience of using it. Okay, so those are my top five reasons for why I love the iPad Pro. And a lot of these reasons don't just apply to the iPad Pro, they apply to all iPads now, which I think is just awesome. You can get a lot of the benefit of the Pro without spending all the money. But even though I love my iPad, I I think that there's some things that maybe could be improved. So next week, I'm gonna go over my top five things that I maybe wish I knew before getting the iPad. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.